Hey everybody. So this video I'm going to be taking a look at an old circuit recloser for a single phase line. So there's a video up on YouTube from Bob's The Climb where he looks at a three phase unit. So I figured today we'll look at a single phase unit. So you can either have three of these on a three phase line or if you have one or two phases on a side line you'll have one or two of these things. And if you ever seen your lights blink off and back on it's generally because of these operating to attempt to clear a fault. So we'll get a close look at it right there. That's the unit right there. It's on a brand new pole. A tree across the road here took out two poles back in the summer. And the purpose of these units is, let's say with overhead lines, it's common for them to have temporary faults like you may have a tree limb or something blow into the line. That fault oftentimes will self clear when power is interrupted. But with just a regular fuse, you would have an interruption of your power that's because the power stays out. Whereas the function of the recloser is to open the circuit to allow the fault to clear and then close back in and if the fault has not cleared it will open again to try to clear the fault and these things can operate up to four times or four um, trips and three reclose operations so we get a better look at this thing so on the back here right up top is a bypass switch and down the pole right about here is a fuse door so when this recloser needs to be taken out of service or replaced, that can install the fuse in the uh, cutout there or a solid switch door into that switch there. And it can effectively bypass the recloser. So if you look here, this is a type V4H recloser. So it is a type 4H recloser with a vacuum interrupter. As you can see there, a little symbol for vacuum rated for 70 amps meaning it will trip at 140 amps these things are rated at various um, current levels based off the size of the trip coil that's installed in them so we look here at the front of it you'll see that we have our load side there or excuse me our load side there and our source side there and up there we have a uh, trip handle and there should also be a counter and a non-reclose handle inside there. And on the front of this, where we have our two bushings, we have two lightning arresters. These are to protect this unit in case of a lightning strike. So this line is a 12,470 face to face, 7,200 volts face to ground line. And if we get a look at the back here, You might be able to see, okay, there's the yellow trip handle. So when this thing goes to lockout or it's manually opened, that yellow handle pops down. And there's also a red handle in there, which is for non-reclose operation. So the purpose of non-reclose is, so let's say they're working on this line. When linemen are actually working on this line, they do not want this recloser to reclose in the case of a trip. So what they'll do is there's a red handle in there that they'll pull down and it sets this thing to one shot. So if for any reason there's a fault on the line and this thing trips, it will not reclose when it's in non-reclose mode. You can see there is the date it will service, October of 2020 it appears to be. These things are a maintenance item. Every so often they have to be serviced. Now in the case with the vacuum reclosers, they don't require servicing as much because the vacuum interrupter well it it prevents the oil from getting contaminated as easily so for example this is a, again a type v4h the type 4h would have an oil interrupter where there are contacts submerged in like a mineral oil and anytime that thing operates it can contaminate the oil so if you look up there you may see a counter so what that counter does is anytime this unit operates it will increment that 
um, counter. That way, it's like, a dom it's like an odometer on a car. It keeps track of how many times the unit has operated. That way, when this unit is serviced, or if linemen have to come out and just eyeball the thing, they can see how many times it has operated in a given time frame. So if we come over to this side, you can see this warning label on the side there. Now I'm looking to see where the data plate is on this unit. It's usually on the on the uh, on the hood where these um, levers are at. It's kind of hard to see on this unit. I'll do the best I can here. So right there is our spec panels or our um, data plate which will specify the current rating, the opening sequence, all that good stuff. And I can't really see it on my camera screen, but I've actually got some photos of the recloser that was on the old pole and it was a type L, which is similar to this. So these things have an opening sequence and it can be programmed at the factory and I believe also changed on the field as well. Um, well, you have to actually untank the recloser to change it. But these things, they have an opening sequence. And these things, generally, um, a common opening sequence will be a 2A, 2B opening sequence. So let's say if you have a permanent fault on the line, the first two trips will be very quick to quickly isolate the fault. And the remaining two trips will actually um, hold in longer. That way, if there's a downline fuse, it will ensure that the fuse operates to clear the uh, faulted section of sublateral line. That way, this thing can reclose and um, restore service. So here's a different look at it. Again, from the ground. But yeah, that is an example of a recloser. When your lights go out and come back on, generally it's because of one of these operating to try to help keep your lights on. Okay, so I figured I'd come inside to finish this video up um, since it's kind of chilly out there with the wind and everything. So these reclosers, the old circuit reclosers, what's interesting about them is they're a relatively old technology. They've been around for quite a while. They don't operate with electronics. They simply operate using hydraulics and a trip coil. So when a fault occurs, the current from the fault causes the trip coil to pull down a plunger, which does two things. Number one, it opens the contacts, either the ones that are in the oil or in the case of the V4H recloser, a vacuum interrupter. And number two, it actually operates a counting sequence. So the Oil circuit recloser actually uses oil and hydraulics to do its thing. It knows how to count the number of operations to lock out. It also handles the auto reset. Let's say you have one or two or maybe three trips and then that last reclose uh, was successful. The thing will auto reset. Um, it also handles the um, Opening sequence, as I had said earlier, these things, they have an opening sequence. For example, I believe that recloser out there on that pole is a 2A, 2B opening sequence. So the A curve trips are, of course, really fast. But the B curves, they hold in a little longer before it opens. That's all done by the hydraulics. So, yes, I mean, it's an old technology. It's pretty dang reliable. They do require maintenance, though. And the thing is, with electronics becoming more and more common starting to see less and less of the oil circuit reclosers on the system in favor of electronic based reclosers but you'll still find these oil circuit reclosers on sidelines and stuff like that although even they are starting to get less and less common as some utilities uh, move to other technologies for example the snc trip saver 2 like what duke energy is using a lot now but yeah so that is an oil circuit recloser from looking from the ground and they're a pretty interesting piece of equipment. They provide that overcurrent protection for the sideline 
and they do so with the means of being able to restore service, let's say if there's a temporary fault, whereas versus with a fuse, um, you just be out of power until the utility comes out to assess the issue. See this neighborhood here I think has like 28 homes in it and although it's a pretty small line it used to have its fair number of issues with uh, with transient faults or temporary faults or more or less the fuse out the road would blow and they would come out find nothing wrong just throw a new fuse and go about their way and this happened several times and eventually um, I had a little discussion with the lineman and I was like let's consider a recloser and it's not necessarily my idea but it's it was a suggestion we'll just say that so again the recloser it really fixed a lot of issues with uh, us losing power in this neighborhood so now if there is a fault in this neighborhood it's generally just a like two to three second blink of our lights now I should note along with that improvement of installing the recloser they installed fuses on every sublateral branch and then with the, within 11 years after them doing that all three fuses have finally blown <laughs> they've had to replace all three but um yeah so huge improvement and i did want to take a moment to go out there and get some video of that thing to share with you guys so anyways that's it for this video hope you enjoyed it thanks for watching hey everybody thanks for watching this video from q career channel if this is your first time, please subscribe to the channel and tick the bell so you get notified of a new video I post. Please like this video if you enjoyed it, leave a comment, and share this video as well as the channel with your friends to get the word out. In addition, I have a second YouTube channel that's QCompMTDX. Again, I hope you enjoyed this video and thank you so much for your support.